to the previous X-rays because the imaging changes very rapidly. So, on the chest radiograph, we first confirm the pathology, localize it and then try to characterize the pathology. So, what are the indications of chest radiograph? For the confirmation or exclusion of pneumonia and because India is endemic for tuberculosis, exclusion of other possible causes for the symptoms which might, which might mimic as pneumonia like tuberculosis and the detection of early detection of related complications in cases with severe pneumonia. So, the amount of whenever you talk about a radiograph, you have to know how much radiation a kid is getting by getting a chest radiograph. So, the amount of radiation from one chest radiograph is around 0 0.01 to 0.02 millisieverts. Chest radiograph in children can be challenging because a small difference in technique can mimic pathology and even normal variants can be confused for an abnormality. Like for the benefit of the junior residents and senior residents, if a junior resident is looking at this radiograph for the first time, this is a three months old kid who has had a chest radiograph for the suspicion of pneumonia. He might think that there is a mediastinal widening, but because an, it is an infant, you have to remember that thymus is present there. So, the cardiothymic shadow, because the thymus shallows the cardiac shadow, it causes the, uh, to, uh, the apparent widening of the superior mediastinum and might mimic a pathology. So, this is a normal radiograph with a cardiothymic shadow and not to be considered as abnormal. Another case, 14 year old girl, she also came for the suspicion of pneumonia. Uh, radiographer did the uh, radiograph and then uh, when he showed it to me, there was a suspicion of a pathology in the right upper zone. For the uh, purpose of junior residents, I would like to tell you that the uh, chest radiograph, we divide it into three zones, upper zone by the anterior end of the upper uh, two ribs, middle zone and lower zone. So, in the upper zone, I could see a pathology, but when you look at it clearly, clear, carefully, you can see that the pathology is also extending in above the clavicles and into the soft tissues in the neck. So, I called the girl, she had very long hair. I called the radiographer and I, uh, scolded him, why didn't you, uh, you know, bind her hair up and then took uh, the radiograph. He told me he had done it, but then I asked the girl again and she told me that she had put a pin. By the time radiographer came out to take the radiograph, the pin fell down, the hair came down and this resulted in the artifact. So, if you do uh, repeat radiograph, this will not come, this radiograph was normal. So, what are the patterns of infection in the lung parenchyma? You can have three patterns of pneumonia. Lower pneumonia, which is usually non-segmental. Entire lobe will be involved. Bronchopneumonia, like lobe, uh, or otherwise called as lobular pneumonia. And interstitial pneumonia. So, what are the findings that you can see on a chest radiograph? It can be any one of these or a combination of these. There can be an asymmetric increase in lung opacification with, air, with or without air bronchogram. There can be a shillard sign. What is a shillard sign? When two objects of similar density, they come in contact with each other, their intervening interface is lost on a radiograph. That is called as a positive shillard sign. And you can see an area of increased opacity bounded by a well-defined interface against adjacent aerated lung, like in case of if the pathology is abutting a fissure, you can see a clear demarcation. If only an AP view is used, such as in cases of sick kids in portable examination, increased attenuation of the cardiac shadow in the retrocardiac region pneumonia can be the only pathology on the chest radiograph. And for radiographs with wide airspace disease, more asymmetric or multifocal distribution of opacification can be seen. So, what is the pathology behind these three patterns of pneumonia seen on chest radiograph? In lower pneumonia, the infection starts from the alveoli then it spreads to adjacent alveoli and the entire lobe is involved. So, it will look like this. Here, the upper zone and the mid zone, which corresponds to the right upper lobe, is significantly opacified with some presence of air bronchogram because the right upper lobe is limited by the oblique fissure. The oblique fissure, below the oblique fissure, the pathology does not ex uh, extend and there is bulky mediastinal lymphadenopathy right on the right hilar region. So, this is a case of Lower, lower consolidation of the right upper lobe. Then in lobular, what happens is infection starts in the airway, then spreads to alveoli slowly. So, it will be multifocal, patchy to start with. So, what will you see on a radiograph? You will see multiple airspace opacities, small, small. When the disease progresses, they tend to coalescent 
and confluent. So you can see some confluent opacities in the lower zone, but in the middle zone, some there are discrete opacities. So this is lobular bronchopneumonia. And in case of interstitial pathology, the pathology starts from the interstitium, then spreads to the alveoli. So what you will see is lot of peribronchial thickening, predominantly in the central pathways. Here you can see there are perihilar linear and reticulonodular opacities. You can see uh, there is no consolidation as such. You can see the underlying lung parenchyma slightly through the pathology also. And in interstitial uh, uh, kind of pneumonia, usually you do not get pleural effusions. So this is just uh, the same thing. In lobar pneumonia, infection starts in the alveoli. So peripheral to central spread predominantly involves one lobe. Air bronchogram may or might, not, might or might not be present. In bronchopneumonia, it starts from airway mucosa. So depending upon where the infection starts from, the pathology will look, look, would look like that on the chest radiograph. And in interstitial pneumonia, interstitium is involved, then alveoli is involved. So you will have a thickening of the interlobular septa, some ground glass nodules, and this is mostly uh, seen in atypical pneumonia cases. So there is a uh, preponderance for the particular uh, microorganisms which can present like in a, in a particular pattern like strep pneumonia usually presents in a lower pattern, strep pneumonia, Klebsiella or Legionella, bronchopneumonia usually Staph aureus or Haemophilus influenza and interstitial viral or mycoplasma. So same thing in lower pneumonia. So this is how it will look on the chest radiograph. This is a frontal chest radiograph. You can see there is a wedge shaped opacity in the right upper zone which is limited by the fissure here. So it is a lower pneumonia probably of the right upper lobe. And then the second case, here you can see there is a well-defined opacity in the right lower zone causing shelleting of the right hemidiaphragm with associated pleural effusion along the right costal margin and some blurring of the right lower cardiac border. So right lower and middle zone consolidation, middle lobe consolidation, lower consolidation. This is classic case of right middle lobe consolidation. There is shelleting of the right cardiac border with air bronchogram seen in the opacity. So right middle lobe consolidation. This is another case. Here you can see the entire right upper zone and right middle zone has become consolidated. You can see this fine, fine thin bronchi. Because the bronchi are patent, the, uh, because the pathology starts in the alveoli, the main bronchi are usually patent. So that gives it the appearance of the air bronchogram and here also you can appreciate the fissure should be limiting the disease but the fissure appears to be bulging. Even on the lateral radiograph you can see the fissure is convex inferiorly and it appears to be bulging. So this is the bulging fissure sign. This indicates that there is lot of exudate in the consolidated lung which usually occurs in Klebsiella or Staph, pneumonia, uh, staph aureus cases. So, Bronchopneumonia, when it is mild, it presents in peribronchial thickening and poorly defined opacities. While severe disease, you can have multifocal patchy areas of consolidation in multiple lobes, like in this case. You can see the entire left lung is normal, but the entire left uh, right lung, including the upper, middle and the lower zone, shows consolidation with more severe involvement of the right lower lobe. Some air bronchogram is present in the upper and the middle zone. There is lot of pleural effusion. So this is a case of multilobar involvement, likely bronchopneumonia with pleural effusion. Another case, similar case but different case. Here you can see the left lung is normal, right lung is involved with multilobar involvement in the upper, middle and lower zone. But what can you see in the right middle zone? As compared to the right upper zone and the lower zone, here you can see there is increased radiolucency in the upper in the middle part of the uh, this entire lung which is actually cavitation of the consolidated lung which has started occurring because of the severity of the infection. So this is necrotizing pneumonia. Now the necrosis has started occurring in the right middle zone and there is lot of pleural effusion also. Another case, here what we can see that there is a well defined radiolucency in the left lower zone overlying the heart shadow and in the left lower zone its air containing cavity. At present we can't see any air fluid level in it. 
so you when there is a cavity you have to say thick walled or thin walled so no no air fluid level it's a thin walled cavity adjacent lung if it looks normal or abnormal because in the last case the adjacent look lung looked abnormal so that was necrotizing pneumonia occurring in case of uh, consolidation so here the adjacent lung looks relatively normal but slight haziness of the left lung can be seen as compared to the right lung so some pathology was there in the left lung which is cleared with the residue of the cavity in the left lower zone so the same patient here when you do the ct you can depict the pathology more clearly and characterize it better so in the right lingular segment here you can see the pathology which was seen on the chest radiograph here can be seen now here on the lingular segment in the left side the left lower lobe is okay there is minimal pleural effusion which was not uh, that clear on the radiograph and here you can see an air crescent along the entire necrotizing pneumonia which was seen in this image so this is also a case of necrotizing pneumonia because the adjacent lung is also involved here there is some effusion and you can see an air crescent all around the consolidated part so the interstitial pneumonia it results from viral or mycoplasma infection it consists of a reticular or reticulonodular pattern so sometimes interstitial pneumonia is very hard to uh, detect on chest radiograph because it occurs as a very subtle finding what you will see just along the you will see some amount of peribronchial thickening because the interstitium is involved the alveoli or the airway has not yet been involved subtle peribronchial thickening and some reticular changes in the bilateral lower zones you can see but when it becomes florid and progresses the radiograph will appear like this you will have a uh, confluent linear and reticulonodular opacities with some centrilobular nodular component no pleural effusion so more in favor of atypical pneumonia and interstitial pneumonia so what is round pneumonia usually occurs in children less than 5 to 8 years usually seen in pneumococcal pneumonia in very early consolidative phase why does it appear round because of poorly developed collateral pathways which are pores of corn and channels of lambert in children because they are poorly developed the pathology is not spreading as fast as in adults with time the initially round pneumonia develops into a more typical consolidation so this is a chest radiograph here you can see there is a round radio opacity in the right upper zone upper mid junction and you can see some air bronchogram in this radio opacity there is no air fluid level there is no cavitation at present so how will you say that this is uh, you will have a doubt of round pneumonia and you will do a ct to confirm here in the ct you can see the air bronchogram more clearly it's a very well defined pathology no pleural effusion no mediastinal lymph nodes and the adjacent lung looks totally normal so this was a case of round pneumonia when it is treated it resolves completely so one of the very important differentials in our country is when you look for when you are uh, doing imaging for pneumonia sometimes you end up getting a chest radiograph which looks like this so what is it you can see there is a there is some pathology in the right upper zone and also in the right mid zone you can see some lymphadenopathy in the hilum and the pathology in the right upper zone has started to cavitate so there there are cavities in the right upper lung that you can see at least two cavities here so this is tuberculosis so a very important differential for pneumonia in our country is tuberculosis so what is the uh, radiographic resolution of pneumonia normal resolution of pneumonia is variable and depends on the causative agent and the host response to invading pathogens so the pediatric infectious disease society and the infectious disease society of america has given some uh, guidelines for the uh, radio uh, for the imaging guidelines in pneumonia patient so if you are going to treat a patient in an outpatient setting every patient need not have a chest radiograph it's not routinely necessary to get a chest radiograph but if you have a patient who has documented hypoxemia or significant respiratory distress and in those patients in which you have already given two weeks of antibiotic and the antibiotic therapy has failed and the kid is not child uh, kid is not clinically improving then you have to do chest radiograph preferably posterior and anter uh, anterior and lateral lateral sometimes helps not always actually depends on the location of the pathology 
एंड टू लुक फॉर द कॉम्प्लिकेशन ऑफ निमोनिया लाइक पैरा निमोनिक इफ्यूजन निक्रोटाइजिंग निमोनिया एंड निमोथोरैक्स बिकॉज इफ दे आर नॉट डिटेक्टेड अर्ली दे कैन लीड टू मॉबिडिटी सो चेस्ट रेडियोग्राफ्स शुड बी ऑप्टेन इन ऑल पेशेंट्स हुर हॉस्पिटलाइज फॉर द मैनेजमेंट ऑफ कम्युनिटी एक्वायर्ड निमोनिया to document the presence size and character of parenchymal infiltrates and identify the early complications of pneumonia which might require other interventions so how do you follow up the patient with chest radiograph if a patient is not improving and has persistence of symptoms or worsening of symptoms then you need to repeat a chest radiograph if a patient in whom the radio opacity is not improving and we are suspecting an underlying malignancy then you have to repeat a chest radiograph but if a patient who is doing clinically well has improved with the antibiotics it is not routinely necessary to repeat a chest radiograph so what is the role of ct in case of pneumonia ct is not a routine investigation in patients with community acquired pneumonia what are the advantages of ct it gives you a fine airway and lung detail it has a multiplanar and 3d capability unlike a radiograph which only is a 2d projection so when do you do a ct in case of pneumonia If you are suspecting a vascular ring or underlying congenital or airway abnormality in a case with persistent or recurrent pneumonia, then you have to do CT angiography. CT is also excellent for the sequelae of the uh, infection, like bronchiectasis, and in cases of interstitial lung disease, CT is excellent. With cases of non-resolving pneumonia, you have to do CT thorax to find out the cause of the non-resolution of the pneumonia. and for the assessment of complications of pneumonia so what are the complications that can occur in a community acquired pneumonia we'll talk about the pulmonary com uh, complications you can have pleural effusion or empyema pneumothorax lung abscess bronchopleural fistula necrotizing pneumonia or acute respiratory failure so this is a case cct contrast axial sections here you can see the left lung looks normal the right lung is abnormal there is consolidation in the right middle lobe and the right lower lobe as well as some cavitation has started occurring in the right middle lobe which was because the right lower lobe is also in the same projection it will come on the chest radiograph this cavitation might not be apparent on the radiograph but it is well visualized on the ct and there's lot of effusion causing compressive atelectasis of the right lower lobe also so what is split pleura sign when you have empyema what happens is because the pleural effusion is infected when you give contrast and you do a contrast enhanced study the pleural lining enhances it becomes thicker than usual normally the uh, parietal pleura is not seen on ct but when it becomes infected and thickened you can make out because on the left side you can't make out the pleural uh, parietal pleura but on the right side you can see this enhancing thick pleura on the right side with the effusion lying in the visceral and the parietal pleura in between that so it splits the visceral and the parietal pleura and enhances so this is called as split pleura sign of empyema this was a case this uh, kid had lot of pleural effusions empyema first pleural effusions treated got infected became empyema and lot of pleural some amount of pleural if fluid is still persisting there is lot of pleural thickening after sometime he developed a bronchopleural fistula because of the infection you can see on the ct you can see in the right upper lobe the bronchus is extending till the visceral pleural surface and is communicating with the pleural cavity resulting in the bronchopleural fistula this was treated with glue after wads so another case here we can see there is a thin walled cavity in the left mid zone with an air fluid level clear air fluid level thin walled cavity rest of the lung looks normal so on ct here you can see the cavity because the child uh, because the patient is in the supine position here also you can see the air fluid level this is the air this is the fluid and thin walled cavity with some mediastinal lymphadenopathy on the left hilar side and the adjacent lung does not show any other focal lesion so what is the role of ultrasound in uh, pneumonia there are few advantages low cost as compared to ct simple to do no risk of radiation damage particularly in kid case, cases of children so it is best performed by trained personnel what are the signs of pneumonia on ultrasound you will see subpleural lung consolidation because if the consolidation is lined by air or normal lung it will not be seen on ultrasound 
but if it is subplural consolidation, it will be seen on ultrasound. You can see B lines, you can see plural line abnormalities, plural effusion and presence of sonographic air bronchogram. So like the chest radiograph, you have sonographic air bronchogram. So this is the patient, this is the liver, this is the diaphragm, this is the right lower lobe of the right lung. Here you can see the uh, normally you should not be able to see the lung parenchyma because the air in the uh, lung will, air is a bad conductor of ultrasound. So air does not let the ultrasound waves come back, it just crosses and it gives you a dark appearance. But here you can see there is some parenchyma in the right lower lobe with some few ecogenic punctate foci. This is the sonographic air bronchogram which we see on an ultrasound as compared to uh, as an equivalent in cases of chest radiograph. So this is called as hepatization of lung in case of full florid consolidation. So this is right lower lobe consolidation. So here what has happened in the consolidated lung, this is the diaphragm, the consolidated lung has started to cavitate, it has necrotized. So there is necrotic component in the middle of the entire consolidated lung. So necrotizing pneumonia when it is subplural in location can also be identified by ultrasound. Another thing, this is the spleen, here you can see in the left pleural cavity there is this anechoic fluid. So you can easily diagnose pleural effusion on ultrasound and when this pleural effusion gets infected, it will show multiple septations, the contents will become ecogenic, the pleura will become thickened, so this is empyma. So there is a upcoming role of MRI of the lung because of the non-radiation alternatives. It can depict alveolar infiltration or exudative patterns in lobar pneumonia and bronchopneumonia. But it is not useful in diagnosing interstitial pneumonia and because it, the access is limited and the kids need to be sedated, it limits its practical use. But this is the CT image and this is the MRI image. Here you can see as well as in the CT as well as in the MRI, you can see the consolidated lung. The normal lung looks black on both CT and MRI, but the consolidation shows the uh, intensity increases. So T2 weighted image, T2 weighted image, T1 weighted image. Here you can see the left upper lobe consolidation as you would see in a chest radiograph. In MRI also you can see. So let's talk about persistent or recurrent pneumonia. When a kid, uh, we treat uh, the kid with antibiotics and the pneumonia is not improving, then what is the imaging algorithm to go about? So you, we do a plain radiograph. If you are able to make a diagnosis, we start the treatment. If the kid is not improving, we review the previous films. If there is only a single lobe involvement, then we have to suspect that there can be a congenital abnormality in that particular lobe bronchus or there can be an artery which is causing compression of that particular bronchus or there can be a foreign body. So you have to go ahead with CT or bronchoscopy to rule out the cause of that single lobe involvement in case of persistent pneumonia. If there is multilobar involvement, you have to uh, evaluate for the immunological disorders and cystic fibrosis. If after ruling out these, you are suspecting chronic aspiration in uh, infants, you have to do upper GI contrast study to demonstrate the aspiration. If there is bronchial wall thickening on the if there is bronchial wall thickening, you have to test for asthma. If there is suspected bronchiectasis, then you have to do CT. And if there is suspected tracheobronchial structural or vascular ring or sling anomaly, then you have to do either CT, bronchoscopy or upper GI contrast study. So the take home message is imaging in pneumonia is dependent on the setting, clinical presentation of the child, the experience of the physician, radiographer, radiologist and the epidemiology of the disease in the source population. And still the chest radiograph is the most widely used approach for the radiological diagnosis of pneumonia. Thank you. Any queries? Yeah, nematocele is a complication or a pathology which occurs in particularly in staph aureus. What happens is because of the uh, pathology in the consolidation area, air filled cavity forms in which is very thin walled that is called as a nematocele. It is slightly thicker, uh, slightly thicker as compared to a bulla that you would see and it is less thicker as compared to a lung abscess. So it is a thin walled cavity 
simple air containing cavity no fluid is there mostly seen in cases of staph aureus pneumonia that is called as pneumatocele so that you can diagnose on chest radiograph and if that is present then uh, it helps you go towards the uh, etiological microbiological diagnosis that staph might be the cause of pneumonia in this case yeah, it's definitely different from necrotizing pneumonia. Necrotizing pneumonia, you will have a thicker wall cavity. Adjacent lung will be totally abnormal because the first, the in necrotizing pneumonia, and the entire lung was already consolidated. Now it has necrotized. Lateral view is useful in retrocardiac pathologies, first thing, because they are not very good, uh, very nicely seen on the AP view because the cardiac uh, shelleting and shadow obscures that. Second thing, posterior costophrenic lesions like lower lobe lesions, lower lobe medial particularly. So they will be obscured on uh, AP radiograph. So lateral view is helpful in that. And sometimes when you want to exactly localize the pathology in the superior segment of the lower lobe because that will be projecting in the right paracardiac border on the AP radiograph and also the upper lobe pathology will also be uh, projecting on the same uh, area and posterior mediastinal pathologies if you want to look for then lateral radiograph is helpful otherwise in upper lobe, middle lobe and lateral lower lobe pathologies lateral radiograph is not required. Yeah, yeah, yes, ma'am. It's available 24 7. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for sharing your insightful knowledge with us. Uh, let us break for a tea and come back by after 20 minutes for the next session of CME. Thank you.